Hey y'all, no no here. Well, I finally made it to Canada. Uh, it's actually Wednesday uh, evening now. Uh, I came across the border this morning. Uh, the reason I haven't really put anything out in the last couple of days is that unless you were coming from the same direction I was coming from, there really wouldn't be any information uh, you know, about the route or places to stay or stuff like that that would be of any help uh, for you unless you were coming the same exact route that I was going. Uh, but I did want to uh, at least put out something because what you see on a lot of channels is that uh, it's not very balanced and uh, people tend to produce content that makes everything look like rainbows and unicorns all the time uh, and I wanted just to talk a little about the fact that it's not uh, you know as Earth, Wind and Fire used to say when you wish upon a dream things ain't always what they seem for instance last night uh, when I pulled into the rest area where I was planning on staying which really was about the only thing uh, that was anywhere uh, near by where I was. Uh, it was 91 degrees uh, on you know, a park, asphalt parking lot. So it was really hot uh, and the sun didn't go down till 920. So there's no shade. The only shade I had at all was mercifully uh, some truckers eventually parked uh, on the west side of me and so that offered me a little shade when the sun got low enough uh, but it's still really hot really tough to sleep uh, I decided not to cook anything uh, last night so I normally uh, one of the one of the things that I make for supper is mashed potatoes with ham and cheese uh, melted in it. So instead of heating up the water to make the instant mashed potatoes, I just poured some cold water in there, <laughs> you know, just to be able to keep warm or keep cool, not warm, keep it from getting any warmer than it already was in the van. So you know, things like that happen, and it's not always. As, as glittery as it looks on YouTube. Uh, and so I like to, you know, keep things balanced. Now the flip side of that coin is today, uh, I'm on the Trans-Canada Highway and I was actually about to give in and start looking for a campground, which I'd had to pay for. Uh, and while I was looking for the campground, I saw this one rest area. Uh, it's on it's on the uh, uh, provincial line between Manitoba and Alberta, and so it's like a little welcome center. Uh, the only difference is it's not a welcome center like we would think of a welcome center. It's just a little gravel parking lot that's pulled that you can pull off into. Uh, a uh, little grassy area. <laughs> there's no bathrooms, there's no water. There are a couple of trash cans uh, here, uh, but other than that, you know, you're you're totally on your own as far as, you know, having what you're gonna need to make it through the night. But fortunately, I've got all that. You know, I've got solar panels and butane stove, and, uh, you know, I can hold it till morning as far as a bowel movement. And I've actually got a porta potty if it was an emergency. It's really so isolated, you could walk out in the grass and squat, probably nobody <laughs> would know the difference. Uh, I'm not going to do that, but uh, I think some people stopped by a little bit earlier today and didn't stay, but I kind of turned my back so they could do that. Uh, so uh, things are a lot different here in Canada. Uh, you know, so if you, if you, drive to Alaska or even spend time in Canada just be ready to feel stupid because the gas pumps 
don't work the same way. Uh, you know, the signage is in French and English, so you have to learn to not try to read the English and French version, but just read the English version, assuming that's your language that you speak. Uh, you know, everything's in kilometers per hour. You know, the gas is, you know, sold by the liter, not by the gallon. So, you know, it, it takes a little effort to figure out what you're really spending on stuff, but I'm just going with the flow and just buying what I need, and <laughs> I'm depending on the Lord to uh, provide the money to pay for it on my credit card at the end of the month. So, uh, that's kind of the way it's been going. One thing I have been wanting to mention uh, in some past videos, but really didn't find the, the space to put it in, uh, but that is, uh, you know, deciding whether to take a trip like this uh, or even a bigger decision. You know, there are people that actually sell their home and build a van and you know, depend on money from YouTube or be able to work their regular job on the road uh, to pay their bills. And I would just say, yo, know, I would urge you to look long and hard and think and pray long and hard before you do something that drastic because that's not what I did. I mean, I've still got my home back home uh, to go to uh, and I would have really had to feel a very, very strong leading from the Lord before uh, I would have done something that drastic. So, just count the cost and, you know, realize even if you try to start living this van life, uh, make some trial runs, take some shorter trips before you take off to Alaska or someplace thousands of miles away. Because you may find that Boy, it really sounds great, but when you start going through it yourself and, you know, every night you have to rearrange everything in the van and, you know, uh, living in a space this small is not as easy as they make it look on YouTube. So I'm trying to be, you know, balanced and let you see the good parts as well as the uh, difficult parts. So anyway, I hope that helps you some. Uh, I'll probably be putting out some more content when I get to a place where there's something interesting to actually look at. So I've got to drive across uh, Alberta and then on into uh, British Columbia before I even come to anything that I'm planning to stop and look at. So anyway, as usual, uh, thank you all for watching. I uh, hope these videos are helping you some. God bless you, everyone, and bye con Dios.